Okay, welcome back. Last time we made our way to Agat Village, I think that's how it's pronounced, and we met Rui's grandparents, and then basically Cypher attacked the Relic Forest, we managed to push them out, and also we managed to catch a Shadow Hitmon top from Cypher Peon Scrub, and now we can purify our Shadow Pokemon. So our Remoraid got purified and evolved into Octillery, Meganium from Bayleaf obviously, uh, Flaffy turned into Ampharos, and Makuhita turned into Hariyama. And then we learned, uh, we then learned that Cypher are attacking Mount Battle, so we need to quickly head on over there. So, off we go. Now, this may come as a surprise, but Mount Battle is a mountain where people go and do Pokemon battles. I know, I was surprised too. So now, uh, we we'll, we could actually fight this lady after we save the day here. It's terrible, terrible, I tell you, it's terrible. Mount Battle's under attack by a group of shady people. Oh, I'm so out of breath. Thinking about taking the Mount Battle challenge, forget about it. I'd keep I'd keep clear of that place for now. If he has been taken over by a bunch of trainers that use weird Pokemon. Okay, so. Well, that's not necessarily accurate. To, in here, I'll, actually, I'll explain this once I am done with the area. No, I'm sorry, but I can't let you in. It's full of thugs. It's dangerous. Oh, you heard about us from Duking? You must be here to save us, fun. You see, it was me who, was co who contacted him for help. I didn't think you would get here so quickly. But please be careful. The power of their Pokemon isn't normal. Okay, so, we'll have nine fights here, and then when we reach the top, we have a boss fight. And one thing I do remember from this bit of the game is a lot of these trainers have ground types. That's one thing I do remember. Whoops, hold on, aren't you mistaken something? All training's been put on hold. But if you, uh, but, it, but, but if you really must, sure, I'll battle you. Okay, so this is Rider Turo. Okay, so let's see what you have, buddy. That is a Trap Inch and a Normal. Normal, Normal, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah. So pretty much a lot of these people, you just use ground sites, and I'll be able to just breeze through them. Also, Octillery has the EXP share, so it will catch up levels a lot faster, which is very good. Because honestly, I always have... Honestly, the main reason I've never used Remoraid in this game before is the fact that it starts at level 20. So I'm really hoping that I can get some use out of it. And hopefully it'll just catch up its levels and really make a good... Uh, Hopefully, it will really earn its place on the team. Okay, a crit bubble beam was a nice way to start, not gonna lie. And there goes that Numel. There we go. <laughs> Just, it took a little while, but it got there. Now, he also sends in a Sandshrew. Man, Sandshrew is such a cute Pokemon. I love Sandshrew. Okay, Trapinch. Trapinch going for Dig means this battle is going to take at least one more turn. But Razor Leaf obviously misses because that's underground, and now we just get the Sand Shrew. No crit, but it nearly one shots anyway. Poison Sting will probably target Meganium because it's super effective. It went for Octillery. No poison? Fantastic. To be totally honest, I will probably have to walk back down. Like, by the time I reach the top here, I'll probably have to walk all the way back down and heal at least once. But if I do, I'll probably just make a cut for that, unless I'm in the middle of a ramble about something. Okay, so Dig, Trap Inch pops up and does 15 damage. Honestly, considering that I was resisted and attacking a Meganium, that was, that was actually a pretty solid amount of damage. I mean, I say that, but at the same time, Trap Inch does have, like, base 100 physical attack. Trap Inch is really physically strong. Like, it has a lot- it has very good physical attack for- like it, that, it has really good physical attack, but it's so slow, that's where it really kind of gets let down by it. Ugh, must have Dakim will reprimand me. Okay, well, we'll see Dakim when we reach the top. Okay, who are you, buddy? Hmm? Turo took a fall, did he? I never could count on that guy. Well, I'll just think of it as there being one more for me to enjoy. Come on. Okay, so this is Hunter. Hunter drop. Drovic? Drovic? I don't know how to pronounce that. And he has a Swinub and a Boltoy. Honestly, uh, if they, I don't know what level... Never think about I don't actually know what level Baltoy evolves at the Claydol. I want to say it should evolve. 
Like, if everything in this game was evolved at the level it should be, this guy should have a Pillar Swine and I think a Clay Doll. Like, I don't remember exactly what level Baltor- uh, He lived on one, but okay, I'm pretty sure it normally evolves into Clay Doll at 36 or 37. I might be wrong on that. I know Duskull and Shuppet evolve into Dusclops and Bonnet at 37. But I, I'll be honest, I've never used a Clay Doll. To my recollection, at least, I've never used a Clay Doll in a playthrough of Gen 3, or any other game that's available in, for that matter. And, yeah, so it's not exactly a Pokemon I'm the most familiar with. And, okay, he also has a Lavatar. That's not- that's also gonna be a non-issue, and Razor Leaf will probably just take them both out. Now, I mind this line of dodges up, but that is a quad effective stab, Razor Leaf, that's Miracle Seed boosted. And also, you know, it's a fully evolved Pokemon versus something that hasn't really evolved at all yet, so, uh, yeah, that was always pretty much a foregone conclusion. Can people stop using Dig? I know, I know it's Ground Stab. Like, I know, I know why they're doing it, because, you know, they get Stab, it's Ground Type. But, like, realistically, it is just buying time. Maybe that's, actually, maybe that's why the, maybe that's why they are doing it. <laughs> just to buy some time. Also, Psybeam. Demon Octillery will hopefully come in very handy yeah, at a later time if I ever, you know, encounter fighting types or poison types. You know, in case someone sends in two at a time, I could have, have Octillery and Espeon just taking them out together. That could be very handy. Okay, so with that, Hunter Drove Drovic, Drovic, I don't know how to pronounce it, is done. And we can head on up to opponent number three. I'm going to get reprimanded too. Well, you tried. If nothing else, you tried. What's going on? Both Tura and Drovic went down? That's weak. I'm not going down easily. Okay. Speak for yourself. Uh, Ryder Kimmet. Like, best of luck, but it ain't it ain't gonna go the way you think it will. Okay, Sanchru and Geodude. Okay, so that is one thing that's just weak to, one thing that's weak to what and the ground. Sorry, one thing that's weak to water and grass, and one thing that's quad weak to water and grass. I wonder what's going to happen here, because also, Razor Leaf is still a special move in this game, so that is going to annihilate that Geodude's entire existence. I will say, I do like how Geodude's, uh, I like how it's getting knocked out animation, is it's kind of just got its hands on its head, it's just like, what? No, that's not meant to happen. <laughs> Honestly, what I probably should have done... I should have targeted uh, it the Geodude slot with Octillery. That, that, that way I would have gotten the Bubble Beam out onto the Numal straight away and just one-shot it, as opposed to using it to just kind of finish off the Sandshrew's tiny amount of health. That was a completely unnecessary crit. Okay, so, in this area we will have nine battles and then we'll fight Dakim at the top and he'll be, well, the area boss. And, uh, honestly, when I was a kid, first playing this, this is where I got stuck. I got stuck here for ages. It just until I finally managed to barely get a win against him. But I will talk more about that when we actually get to it. I'll, I like how she goes from... Uh, I like how she kind of just acknowledges that she did lose very easily there. Just today, I'll back off easily. Okay, so... I... I'll... Probably go to fight number five and run back down and heal, I think. Okay, so what a, so Ryder, whatever his name is. So that trio is already uh, that trio you've already defeated. If I lack him for food, they'd be your doves. The real battling begins now. Okay, so that is Ryder Ryder Ryden. Okay, solid name. Can't complain. Okay, a Pineco and another Baltoy. Have we run out of ground types already? The answer is no, we haven't, but there's actually... Now that I think that you... I don't think you actually see all that many Kanto Pokemon in this game. So I guess we're looping back around to Hoenn or ones already. Because I think... Actually, no, we haven't seen a Fampy up here yet. Uh, we could have used Fampy. And, uh... Well, there are a couple... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah, I should probably switch Octillery out. It is dangerously low. And honestly, 
of, of course, I, of course I barely, of, uh, rock smash, okay. Of course I barely miss out on the kill, but that's fine. Now I can just go for a Razor Leaf, that'll finish off the Pain Coup and probably do a lot of damage to the Baltoy. Right, and then whatever comes in will probably just eat a ton of damage from a Bubble Beam, because Bubble Beam will do decent damage on anything. Or more likely it'll just finish off the Baltoy, unless the Baltoy outspeeds and targets it. Okay, he sends in a Hound Hour. Interesting, interesting. Another, another dig user. Well, well, uh, what a surprise. Okay, for my own safety, I'm gonna switch artillery out and go to Umbreon here. I'm gonna go to Umbreon primarily because it has the lowest level of all my other Pokemon. Hariyama, I'm not too worried about because Hariyama is still just kind of a placeholder on the team until I get one final Pokemon that I really want. And uh, hopefully we can get through without too much hassle. That's just Ember, so that won't do a massive amount of damage. But it'll do a little bit. Okay, you know what? 15... Like, 15 damage, that's, what, like, a 7th? Uh, yeah, like a 7th? To be totally honest, that's kind of surprisingly... That's kind of a surprisingly large amount of damage to take like when, uh, you know, Umbreon is as much of a special wall as it is. And now, hopefully... Okay, there goes Valtoy. So what is this guy's final Pokemon? Because he did have four. Okay, so... What's the last Pokemon this guy is going to send in? It is... A Graveler! Okay. Level 37 as well? Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah uh, most of his Pokemon have been level 37. Whoops. <laughs> My bad. Okay, I guess for 15 damage last turn was a low rule as well. This Houndour could actually do some damage. Secret power hits for decent enough damage, I think. Can I get a Paralysis? No, of course not. However, what I want to do is I'm going to risk Octillery this turn. I'm going to risk Octillery this turn so I can switch it in. in and hopefully Razor Leaf will knock out the Graveler so I can get the EXP onto the... So hopefully I can get the EXP from... Uh, watch him recall it onto, from the Gravelet onto Auxiliary. And I just realized this could have been a terrible idea because, uh, watch him recall it, Auxiliary uh, still has the EXP share on. But here we go, level 28, and because this thing probably embered in, yeah, probably embered into Auxiliary, because it was probably going for Umbreon again, and Auxiliary should. Okay, Auxiliary still takes that hit pretty comfortably. And now I can just double in the Hound Hour, and that should finally get rid of this guy. You know what? Credit to him, right out ridden. He he threw it. Like, he actually gave a he put in an effort. Like he made an attempt. There he tried. Unlike the rest of these people. I mean, I say that he still he still didn't manage. But hey, he, there was an attempt, and I can respect that. The real battles begin after me. Okay, so... I should probably go back and heal. So what I am gonna- so what I'm gonna do instead is use two regular potions, and then just go into this fight, then I'll run back and heal after this one. Okay, so, battle number five, we're halfway there. Wow, you've come a long way from- a lo you've come a long, long way from home. You should be proud of yourselves. But prepare for a fresh and I never miss targets once I get them in my sights. Okay. Uh, okay, Hunt Atelier. Let's see what you can do. You have a Trap Inch and a Lily. Okay, a Lily. Interesting, interesting. I mean, we have seen a... I know we've seen an Anorif already, but I, f I don't think we've seen a Lily so far in this game. Honestly, Lily was a Pokemon that always irritated me when I was a kid, just because it was rock grass type, and I just never comprehended that until I actually got one. And so fighting Cradilly, uh, so fighting Stephen's Cradilly at the end of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire was always annoying for me, because I didn't know what it was properly weak to. But now I do know that it's weak to Ice. Unfortunately for me, Ice... You know what? Ice is still a special attack, and... Disregard what I just said, I I had a moment. Okay, Sandstorm. Another Pokemon going for Dig. Also, because of the way the emulator does a thing, thing uh, that's why the Sandstorm isn't fully across the screen. 
Okay, so... Uh, I'll switch into Umbreon. Oh! Arena Trap. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course it's Arena Trap. What? I... I'll be honest, I don't know how I managed to forget about Arena Trap. Hopefully we can just do, um... Actually, since that's only hitting... Never mind, I was gonna say, since that's only hitting one thing, it might knock out Lily. But either way, Bubble Beam should finish the job, and we should be able to take a hit from the Trap Inch one. Uh, and I think we should be able to take the hit from the Trap Inch regardless of what it does. So, let's hopefully be okay, and continue on with this fight. Barbo is her next Pokemon. What a ground type means it is going to be quad weak to... That means it's going to be quad weak to raise our leaf and Octillery gets knocked out. Okay, that's not ideal. That's actually far from ideal, but I'll switch in Umbreon. Realistically, maybe I should have gone to Espeon. Realistically, I think maybe Espeon would have been the play here because Espeon does more damage. But at the same time, Umbreon is very close to a level up, so I'm not too worried about it. So let's just keep going. Okay, so, uh, I guess we just bite and raise our leaf. Wait, Meganium? I... Okay. I don't know why, but I really thought that, that uh, Umbreon was going to outspeed Meganium, but, but either way, raise our leaf hits both and knocks both out. So now we have a 2v1 situation regardless of what she sends in, so I'm in a pretty good position right here. And Umbreon goes up level 32, it will learn... Uh, it'll learn Faint Attack in four levels' time. And her last Pokémon is another Trap Inch. Okay. So now, because Trap Inch is so slow, I'll be able to just knock it out before it gets to dig. So I am in a pretty good position here. Now that I think about it, Gen 5 was a really good time for Trap Inch. Because the introduction of the move Bulldoze is really good for Trap Inch. Because, you know, being able to lure something speed is always... Well, one, it's, like, 65 base stab. It's stab, 65 base power, and it lowers the target to speed. Bulldoze is such a helpful move to have on a, tra an on a trap inch. Okay. And with that, her target gets away, and we also take 608 poker dollars, because, you know, we get, we get money around here, I suppose. The next time you meet, I really won't let you escape, okay? Uh, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I'll make a quick cut, and I'll be right back once I go heal. Okay, so I quickly just went back and healed. Everyone's back to full HP. Yeah, and, Oct and, mo and most importantly, Octillery is back in the fight. A street performer. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to put Espeon out for run. Ampharos, unfortunately, is not really going to have anything to do in this episode, because there's so many ground types around. Hello, hello, hello. If you want to get by me, you'll have to watch my performance. Okay, let the show begin. I like the idea that the Street Performer... Okay, Street Performer Nort. Interesting name. I like the idea that they have, like, no investment in what's happening. They're just... Like, they were just here anyway. Okay, so they lead with a Spinder and a Cacnea. Okay, that is a very different setup from what we've seen so far. And for my own safety, I'm going to switch Octillery out to Umbreon and just Confusion in on the Cacnea. Basically, I want to get rid of the Cacnea because Cacnea is probably more of a threat to me than a Spindo would be. I say that, watches the Spindo now just crits me every single time it moves. That would have been a great time for me to get a crit, but I guess we can't choose these things. But that was a... Okay, so Tita Dance own tempo. That's mildly infuriating, not gonna lie. So basically, Tita Dance is a kind of area of effect move for double battles that will, you know, just inflict confusion on everything. And perhaps against my better judgment, I am going to risk it. Do I get. No, Espeon hits itself in confusion. Does Umbreon break through? No. Wait, does... Does Calling get through Confusion in this one? On the plus side, the Spinner might not be able to do a whole lot, because it seems to only be using uh, Psybeam. Needle Arm will hurt, though. I think. 
Okay, yeah, that was actually less damage than I expected because Cacnea is more physically oriented. Cacnea is more physically oriented. Unfortunately for uh, the game, this uh, in this gen, all the grass moves are still special. A crit confusion just knocks out the spin there. Bite from Watchamacallop from Umbreon will knock out Cacnea if we break through. And, well, hopefully we should be okay. And her last Pokemon is Kadabra, which, as we all know, is made of, like, wet paper in terms of its physical defenses. So, Needle Arm is gonna hit and do, like, enough 30 damage or something. Man, I might have to run back and heal again. Okay. So, I'm gonna go for Secret Power, and I'm just gonna hit Return on the Kadabra. Because to be totally honest, Espeon's Return is probably gonna do enough to just knock it out in one. Huh. It, it doesn't. That's genuinely kind of surprising. This thing got one move and it went for Future Sight. Goofy. Okay, turn, turn, secret power. Our uh, hits, knocks out Cacnea, and now we can just double in on this Cadaver and be on our way. So that is 500 to EXP. Octillery went up to, I think that was level 29? Was it 29? Yeah, 29. Fantastic. Octillery is, uh, you know, mostly because of the sheer force power that is the EXP share in this game. Octillery has pretty much caught up to my other Pokemon, and that is very welcome. I love how when it gets knocked out, Kadabra, it just throws the other- like, it just throws the spoon up, and it's like, uh, ah no, it'll never hit me here. And then it gets kind of just bonked on the head by the spoon and knocked out. So I guess technically the spoon knocks it out, not the move, but whatever. Nobody would pay to see my show. No, no, I don't know. You might- I don't know, you didn't really do any tricks or anything? Your show could be cool. Also, Espeon's a little health, so I'm gonna switch Meganium back to the front. Honestly, maybe I should put Hariyama out the front, but whatever. All six were defeated? Sheesh, what were those incompetents doing? This is where the buck stops. Okay, buddy, what do you, whatever you say. Okay, hut a wig. Interesting name. People in this game have such weird names. Gravela and Sandslash. I am suddenly thinking it was very. Uh, uh, I'm suddenly thinking it was a very good choice to put Meganium back out front. Also, Meganium might hit level 35 before I reach boss, so that's kind of nice. So I'm gonna Bubble Beam and Razor Leaf. Uh, Razor Leaf should one-shot Graveler because it's quad effective stab, uh, and uh, Sand Slash will take a lot of damage. Okay, that was actually nowhere near as much as I expected. But also, at the same time, that was way more EXP than I expected from that Graveler. And, of course, something else goes for Dig. Honestly, at this point, I should just expect it. Okay, I'm gonna... I'll go for Aurora Beam into the Vibrava. Because uh, Vibrava is part Dragon. That also caught me off guard the first time I played a Gen 3. Because it's just like, hey, this pure ground type is suddenly a Dragon. Oh, they're all going for dig. Oh, this is gonna get annoying in a hurry, isn't it? Actually, I say that, but at the same time, it really won't. Or at least it shouldn't. Because since Octillery is so slow, unless the, unless the Vibrava knocks it out when it comes up, comes up, it should just get wiped out by the Aurora Beam. Because the Aurora Beam is quite effective. And we take the hit, fantastic. And Aurora Beam should finish it off and bring Octillery up to level 30. Bang, and a crit, probably an unnecessary one, but I will take it. But hey, I'll take it. Hopefully I can get, hopefully I'll have good crit luck when I reach the boss, but I know my luck, I won't. But hey, that is opponent number seven defeated. Fantastic. So, let's just keep going. You made me lose. They're not gonna hire me again after this. Okay, I'm gonna make another cut and quickly run back and heal again, so I'll be right back. Okay, so, I quickly ran- I quickly ran all the way back down, healed, and put Umbreon at the front, because I would quite like Umbreon to hopefully maybe get another level before this next boss. So let's quickly head on up to opponent number 8 out of 10. 
I guess we're all a little guilty of underestimating you. You've earned some respect, but I'll make you regret ever having come here. And now we actually get to fight like, Cypher Peons. We're, we're first up, it's Cypher Peon on Keys... Uh, Kisson? Kisson? Whatever. We're gonna get through them without too much hassle. Hound Hour and Duskull. Okay, turn, turn. And, uh, I guess another unintended prediction. Okay, so... Uh, I'm just gonna bubble beam and bite, and that should... It won't one-shot both. Hound Hour will probably get one-shot, but I don't think Duskull will go down and run. Unless I crit. A crit might take it out with one. But otherwise, yeah, Duskull is pretty bulky. And, well, Eviolite Dusclops is still pretty... Like, Eviolite Dusclops is still really powerful even now. And a completely unnecessary crit just blasts that Hound Hour. Okay, so that is one Pokemon down. What is up next? Up next is... A Coughing. Okay, so I can just Psybeam with that. And we've got Flinch, fantastic. So I can Psybeam in with Octillery into the Coughing. And Bite should finish off the Duskull now. Now, so that should lead into her fourth and final Pokemon. On, and I don't know if I'll one-shot with... I don't know if Psybeam will one-shot. Because, like, I think Espeon would. Like, I think Espeon would definitely one-shot this thing. But will Octillery? No, but it was very close. And it goes for Will-O-Wisp, which is a minor annoyance, but on the plus side, I don't need to worry about it. Honestly, um, if... <laughs> if it had burned... If it had burned Umbreon, and then it had synchronized the burn and just wiped it out, that would have been so funny. Okay, so... I feel pretty confident to just let the burn rock for now. I'm okay it was just leaving the burn on Octillery for now. I'm not gonna lose to it. Lose to it, and I think I can get through the next fight without too much hassle. Oh, and then I'll run back and heal again before I fight the boss, because obviously the boss is going to be a uh, he's gonna be a bit of an issue. Unless he is uh unless he's actually a giant pushover and I was just very bad at this game as a kid. But hey, we'll find out in uh in hopefully not too long. So bubble beam and bite, that should finish off this curlier. Now that was just overkill. How do I get I got so many unnecessary crits in this game? Okay, Octillery hits level 31. Very nice, very nice. It isn't right. I shouldn't lose. I mean, your opponent number 8 and there's 10 people here. It's like, that's how this works, buddy. I shouldn't have battled you in the first place. You know it's serious, because now it's kind of straightened out to just a straight line to all of them. Can I get a 1000 DXP before? Well... I'm gonna risk it, I guess. I'm hoping I can get the level up for it. I hope I can get the level up for Umbreon before before I reach the boss. You've done well to get here, but there's no next battle for you after this. I'll destroy you thoroughly. Okay, buddy. Let's see what you can do. So, uh, Cypher Peon Baron. And let's see what he has. He has a Geodude and a Geodude. I should have put Meganium out front. But honestly, this isn't going to be much of a hassle. I'm just going to bubble beam. I'll just click bubble beam on one, bite on the other. Both are special attacks. One, you know, will be quad effective and just annihilate it. I should have uh, actually targeted in on two. On, uh, yeah, I should have targeted individually. Uh, in, and not just doubled in on one. That was it. That was a very, very minor misplay on my part. But hopefully it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. And this guy also has a Sand Slash. Honestly, him having a... S <sighs> of course. Of course. And Octillery goes down to that because of course it does self-destruct and explosion in this game. Wow. Okay, Umbreon can eat this. Umbreon can eat that. Umbreon should just get a mountain of experience all to itself now isn't exactly my favorite way for that to happen, but you know what? It could be worse. <laughs> Got double EXP from that 10 out of 10. What? 
that wasn't me being outrageously strong. That was you clicking self-destruct in Generation 3. Okay, so... Do we got a swelled head just because you beat me? He'll, uh, Dakim will defeat your pride real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly run and heal one more time because I am not fighting this guy I without artillery. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've quickly gone and healed, I want to shuffle my party around one more time. I'll explain why I'm leading with Umbreon and Espeon when we get into the fight itself. But now we can meet the boss in charge here. Fine. After all the persuading I did, you still won't hand it over. <clears throat> This is what happens to stubborn oafs who don't do as I say. Y you treacherous swine. How could you refuse to battle? <laughs> treacherous? You didn't really think that a worm like you could win. All you had to do was hand over the time flute without making a fuss. It's your own fault for getting hurt. Since you're not cooperating, I don't have any choice but to haul you off to Ayn's lab. <clears throat> who are you? What were my underlings doing? That outfit of yours. You must be the troublemaker who messed with Scrub and Salvi's forest. And now you've come to mess with me, the great Darkium. Don't make me laugh. I'll pound a lesson into your flesh and bones so you'll never even think of bothering me again. So, if, uh, watch him call him. If Mira B was the first boss, Darkium is the first actual boss. So, he leads with Matang and Camera. Okay, that's a new one. Haven't seen him lead with camera up before. He normally leads, in my experience, he always leads with Matang and Ghoulam. But hey, we'll work with it. So, I'm leading with Umbreon and Espeon so I can taunt the Matang turn one and set up Reflect. Because Dakim loves to use Earthquake Protect as his main strategy. However, by making sure that he can't, you know, alternate using Earthquake and Protect, that kind of throws his entire game plan off, off, which should, in theory, paired with the damage reduction from Reflect, make this fight a lot easier. Peter, that sucks. I don't like that. That's really bad. Okay, so I'm going to go for Bite on the Matang, and I'm going to switch out uh, Espeon into Octillery. Hopefully, hopefully Bite will get a flinch on the Matang. And if it doesn't, then this could be pretty bad, but I think we should be okay. Okay, come on, flinch. Flinch, flinch, flinch. Metal, Metal Claw's fine. Metal Claw's okay. I can work with that. Okay, but it's seven damage. Okay, now Camera goes for Flamethrower, probably also onto Octillery. Yeah, they doubled in on Octillery because they probably saw the kill on Aspion. Now, because because this would normally be Matang's turn to Earthquake, I think the Camera Up will protect. Fantastic. The Camera Up protects, so now I double in on the Matang this turn. Bite does a decent chunk. And now Psychic. Ooh, that's gonna do a lot. But it's not a crit, and Octillery lives. Barely, but Octillery does live. Special Defense Drop doesn't honestly make all that much difference when I have that little HP left. And we land the Bubble Beam, but now that Matang is in kill range for Bite, and I can Bubble Beam the Camera Up, and Bubble Beam will be quad effective, and stab, so it'll probably knock out the Camera Up. So we should be in good position here, because we have gotten rid of the Matang, and we'll more than likely get rid of the camera up in this one turn. And that is pretty huge. In comes his next Pokemon in the form of Marsh Tom. And once this camera up goes down, and in uh, he will send out his Golem. Okay, so there goes Camera Up. I will say I do love Camera Up. It's such a cool Pokemon. And, okay, so now Golem and Marsh Stomp are on the field, and I want to get rid of, uh, honestly, kind of both of them if I can. And, like, if I can get rid of both of them, that's great. I'm not switching out to Meganium just yet, because realistically, I'm just, 
realistically, I'm just gonna let Octillery go down. Octillery has kind of served its purpose here, and also had like 14 health, and I know what's coming after this, so I didn't really want to have to mess with him. So, I probably should have switched Umbreon out though, because I would probably be in a better position to have something powerful still alive. Like, not powerful, but something that can take a hit well. Honestly, that Earthquake nearly just took out Marshtomp by itself. And my Reflect wears off, but I think I'm in an okay position here. Because I can Bite and Razor Leaf, and this will probably knock out both of his Pokemon. There goes Marshtomp. Fantastic. And now... Does Razor Leaf also finish? Razor Leaf doesn't finish off Golem, but Bite absolutely will as he sends in his final Pokémon, the Legendary Entei. And this is what I was worried about. Because now, I have to catch an Entei. Which, you know, if you've ever played Pokémon, if you've ever tried to catch an Entei before, you know that it's a giant pain. Now add in the fact that it is like seven levels... Yeah, add in the fact that it's like seven levels over all of my other Pokémon. And the fact that it has a move that will do guaranteed recoil damage, and it can knock itself out. This is not going to be enjoyable. But I'm gonna try my best to catch this Isente. So hopefully we can get it. And also, uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Yes, the next two bosses after this will have Suicune and Raikou. So. Uh, secret power, can I get a paralysis from that? Doesn't really matter if I don't. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna go for Bite and Thunder Wave. Kinda hoping it targets Ampharos. It did target Ampharos, and we live. Thunder Wave will now get the paralysis, and we can get a little bit more chip damage with Bite. But yeah, this honestly... Catching, like, catching this Entei is going to be a giant pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whittle, a, I'm going to keep whittling away at it, but I'm going to, I'm going to throw probably three Pokeballs. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start throwing Pokeballs now. I'm going to give it three. I'll give it three Pokeballs, and if I don't catch it, actually after those, and if I haven't caught it after those three, I'll just speed up until I eventually do catch this thing. And hopefully we can get this without too much hassle. One, two, three. No. Oh, if it had just stayed in. If it, if it had just stayed in and I'd caught it in the first ball, that would have been amazing. That would have been unprecedented for me. Okay. Completely unnecessary crit, but okay. Okay, Ampharos gets taken out. I can now, however, send in Espeon. I can send in Espeon, who is already on low health, because I can now throw a Pokeball with Umbreon's turn. I'll throw an Ultra Ball. I'll throw an Ultra Ball with Umbreon's turn, and I can go for Reflect with Espeon's turn. Because, oh, is it Reflect will reduce the potential damage of Shadow Rush, I believe. It won't do anything else about the rest of his moves, but hey, it could work. One. And it immediately breaks out, okay. Okay, so, Reflect is back up, and now all I can do is throw Pokeballs and hope. So, I'm going to throw one more, and then I'll start speeding up. Shadow Rush will finish off Espeon. Okay. What do I even have left? I think it's just Umbreon and Hariyama, actually. Because Octillery's down, Espeon's down, Meganium's down. Yeah, it's just these three. Which is not exactly a scenario I like. If Hariyama had whatchamacallit, I would feel a lot more confident about this. Like, if Hariyama had thick fat and didn't have guts, I'd feel a lot better about this current situation. I'm also going to heal Umbreon just so it can hopefully take one more hit if it needs to. Okay, last one before I start speeding up. Pokeball go. Well, it went in the ball, so that's a good start. One. Immediately broke out. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to speed up until I hopefully catch this thing, so I will be right back.
Finally. Honestly, I thought that was never gonna happen. Hey. Well, we won. At what cost? I don't know, but hey, we won. The way you handled those Pokemon with your audacious skill. Who are you? Master Darkin. Ah, screw up. You are, you are hopelessly outclassed against him. You had zero chance of winning. I'm pulling out for oh now. You go to Ein's lab and help out there. As you wish, sir. This isn't over yet. Stronger Pokemon are being made even now. You'd be you'd better get serious about training your Pokemon for our next meeting. And with that, he jumps away. Like, he must he must jump really hard or something. Okay, so we now get the F disc. We'll get that in the near future. Well, we'll find use for that in the near future. Ow, oh, that wasn't an experience I'd ever want to have again. I'm glad you came to my rescue. Thank you. I'm Vander. I'm an area leader here at Mount Battle. I'm Rui, and this is Rui, and this is Wes. Quite glad to see you. Rui explained everything that had happened to Vander. Hmm. Well, you've told me you explained a lot. Thanks to you, I know exactly why they attacked us. This is the Time Flute. I happened to find it while I was on my training track. It said that the Time Flute will summon Celebi, but just once. There must be something about Celebi that frightens them. They obviously don't want Celebi to encounter Shadow Pokémon. But let's not spend any more time here. Let's go back. But here, I want you to have this. So we just get the time flute. But are you certain? Can we really have something this precious? Of course you can. And I'd rather you use that time flute. Sorry. I'd rather you use that time time flute than, than have those crooks take it by force. Use it and save the shadow Pokemon from their sinister lands. And now we also get ATM for Steel Wing. We don't have any Pokemon that can fly, so whatever. By the way, you two seem to have been fighting that gang for a long time. You should come here for training, then. It'll toughen you up much, much more. I have to warn you, though, if you come up against me, I won't ease up one bit. I'll be waiting. Okay, so... Well, we finally... Well, we finally caught that Entei. Eh? Honestly... I should have probably just brought the Hitmontop for Intimidate. That would have been so... That would have made this so much easier. But anyway, I... I'm going to heal, because I have a feeling the game didn't heal... The game did not heal me. I am glad to have checked, because it was terrifying, but I always believe that uh, we'd be saved. Anyways, I shouldn't be chatting. I have my job to do. So, now let's quickly heal up and end off today's episode, because uh, I'm going to be totally honest. Uh, th like, this episode will probably get... Uh, this episode will probably get cut down to, like, 45 minutes. I've been recording this for two hours. <laughs> I've been recording this for two hours, because... As it took that long for me to catch Viento. I had to redo that fight like seven times. Because <laughs> it just would not stay in the ball. Anyway, with that, t today we managed to save Mountain Battle. We can now come back and challenge Mountain Battle if we if we so choose. But and I'm going to end off today's episode here. And next time we'll be finding out what we need to use that, uh, that, uh, that disc that we found for. So, I'm going to end off today's episode here. As always, feel free to leave a comment or click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined. And I'll hopefully see you all next time for more Pokemon Coliseum. Okay, thanks for watching. Later.